Okay, I've had a couple emails and a couple people asking me on what this thing is all about. What you're looking at right here is the arcade machine I built for my two-year-old daughter for her birthday. It's basically a little miniaturized arcade machine. You can see it next to the others, how small it is. 42 inches high, I believe, is the total height on that thing. It's sitting up on casters so that it moves around nice and easy. But I try to make it as authentic as possible without getting way too overkill. But it's basically powered by one of those little jacks plug-and-play machines. So if, if you're familiar with those, you can get Mortal Kombat, you can get Star Wars, you can get SpongeBob, Nicktoons, uh, just a bunch of jazz. A lot of those Galaga, Miss Pac-Man, Rally X type things are all plug-and-plays now. But uh, So the possibilities are endless on what I could have gone with. However, she had a big SpongeBob SquarePants kick right now. So I went ahead and made this themed after that figuring that, well, she'd have an easier time understanding who she's controlling on the screen if, if she knows Spongebob. But, um, so looking at the cabinet, it's all standard MDF. Uh, it was cut to fit off a kind of a custom measurement. I tried to model it after a Galaga Miss Pac-Man cabinet, but the bezel's a little bit more upright. But uh, it's all, you know, primered up, painted, and then it got the, uh, the routed edges so that I could put the T-molding on. It's uh, pretty much plexi everywhere on the front above the marquee. And, uh, you know, in front of the tube, this is basically one of those poster boards, yellow colored, that I just picked up at Walmart, put some of the graphics on, cut it to fit around the 13-inch tube, and then just covered it with plexiglass. So, you know, can't harm yourself that way. Plexiglass, a little bit smudged up from kid's finger, um, but this covers the control panel and keeps all the stickers and graphics and stuff held in place and nice and secure. And it gives it that nice crisp look. The controller, that's a hap four-way controller. There's only four operations up, down, left, and right off this game, so why go over a kill on an eight? Let's just do a four-way. Uh, there was two buttons, A and B, or action view, that go with the game. You rarely ever use the view button, and the action's the main one you ever use, but there it is. Everything's held in with carriage bolts, uh, the menu button, so you can go back to the main menu to select one of the four games that are on here. Uh, the graphics that you see all over the cabinet, those are basically just the same vinyl adhesive uh, graphics that you buy at Target or offline, but when you put them all together, it almost kind of makes the cabinet look like it's legit, like it actually has side art. But, you know, if I would have left that all yellow and thrown those things on, it would have looked, you know, kind of ghetto. So I went ahead and just taped off a section, spray painted it with some blues and some purples to give it that SpongeBob bikini bottom look to it. Threw on the graphics on top of that with a one inch border, and, you know, it just it kind of looks legit, you know, like a little arcade machine. Uh, so how does this thing work? Well, the plug and play, I've got all hot wired up. The tube in there is a 13 inch TV. I think it's like a Sanyo. And I basically gutted it out of its frame, mounted the chassis in some wood behind, uh, which I'll show you in a second. But it's just a regular old TV, and which turns on up top here, so I don't have to reach behind. One switch powers on the tube. You know, we've got power running already, obviously, because there's the marquee light lit by the 12-inch uh, fluorescent. Now there's another switch up here, which just turns on the game. So it goes through its uh, load-up cycle and it starts to play. Gives you an option of four, playing four different games. The back, this is how you access the guts, which is not very often. Uh, but I had to, I didn't quite measure ahead of time how big a TV would be. So uh, I ran into, an, into a little bit of problem, so I'll have to get back here eventually and work on this more. But as of right now, it's being the neck board is being uh, covered by this Wizard of War cabaret cabinet piece. And if we open this up, you can see the inside of this thing. That's the tube. You know, I had to kind of custom mount it, some ghetto mounting, but it works. It's held in secure. You see the chassis all in there. Uh, and there's the audio video cable, which goes down, excuse the wiring mess, goes down to the uh, plug and play. Just give you some light here so you can see this. But, uh, so those switches we saw, right up there, they come straight down, right into the main unit. The LED light corresponds to that hole so that I can see, yes, the game is in fact batteried up and going. Uh, I will be hot wiring a, a power adapter to a wall unit so I don't have to run it on battery power anymore but as of right now this thing goes forever on batteries I mean seriously like uh, I haven't had to replace them yet and I've left it running constantly uh, 
what we've got on either side of this little unit is little barrier strips so that everything is secure and nothing's going to tug too much on these little leads. But uh, you look at that board and you can see there's a, a padded button which corresponds to up, down, left, right, B, A, menu, and various other little buttons. And those all just got little, it's kind of tough to tell, but uh, they got little itty bitty solder uh, beads added to the little, uh, the little button spots. And then I brought the wires from all those things up underneath and they just attach right to the micro switches on the joystick, the buttons, menu button, it's all there. Uh, and they just, you just have to find which one is which. It's pretty easy. And uh, that's about it. You just want to make sure you get a good ground wire too. I think I finally found a, a good one in there. Took it over to the barrier strip and then just uh, uh, chain, daisy chained the ground wires again and again and again and just kept on using them throughout the machine. Took some uh, ground wires up to the buttons, up to the joystick. Uh, so there's pretty much the inside of it. It's very, very simple. And again, like I said, the, uh, the power adapter wall unit will, will be hot wired into that eventually so it doesn't have to run off the battery. But it's a very simple setup. All you have to do is just find which button does what. They're marked on there. Splice some wires, add a couple beads of solder, and you're good. And that could go for any game. If you want to do on the cheap, just go buy a $20 game rather than a 48 and one and just go get one of those multi-Galaga Pac-Man pole position monstrosities and hot wire it into something like this. Build it for your own kid. But uh, yeah, and all the water, wires as of right now are ghettoed out through this hole rather than just simply cutting it to fit. I'll, I'll get around to that. So as of right now, it's a little bit ghetto, but hey, it works. And I'll kill the light show you a little bit more of that gameplay. Uh, this is another game that's on here uh, where you're supposed to set up fans all around the place and maneuver these jellyfish over into Spongebob's uh, net. Uh, the main game is called uh, Jellyfish Dodge. Sure, let's continue. Jellyfish Fields, right on. And you're just basically cruising around as Spongebob, you know, bitch slapping these jellyfish or dodging them or whatever the case may be. You're going to see a little bit of uh, uh, warping on the screen. That's nothing to do with the game or the arcade game. That's just how it films on this camera. But you get the idea. You cruise around, you whack things. So pretty fun for a little kid. Very simple. You get the idea. There's, there's other things. You, sometimes you have to like maneuver SpongeBob to a goal you know, and not get stung by jellyfish. Sometimes you're attacking them. There's a whole bunch of little games. Menu button. Let's go ahead and quit out of this. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. And we'll just go back to the main screen. Uh, there's the glide and collide. There's like a snowball showdown with Patrick, which is nothing more than, you know, uh, the, the old-fashioned tank game. What is that? Scorched Earth, where you're trying to aim a snowball at another person on the other side of the screen. And, uh, and then there's this one, which is pretty good, which is basically Arkanoid with Spongebob's head. As you can see here, it's all lined up like Breakout or Arkanoid. Launch the ball, and that's it. Little power-ups do different things. You collect little power-ups and little pieces of Krabby Patties, and you can get uh, extra lives from building Krabby Patties. So the levels change eventually, and you get a little bit uh, different themes going on, but overall it's the same game. It's very simple for a little kid to play. I'd recommend getting it for any of you uh, parents out there that have a little one that you want to get into gaming. At any rate, that's the game. That's what it's all about. Thanks for watching the video. Good luck on building a cabinet just like this. Well, I hope to see more of these in the future from uh, all you would-be builders. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.